Today, I'm going to show you guys how to put our new 128.64 LCD kit on your SV06+. Plus. If you guys are tired of dealing with the little bugs and glitches with the touchscreens, we have a kit here that will now get rid of the touchscreen from the SVO6 Plus and put a 12864 screen on there. We've also not only designed the whole screen kit, but we also have super easy to use firmware to update your printer so you can stay up to date with the latest features on our Unify 2 firmware, which is built on top of Marlin. So let's show you how to put that on the printer right now. You'll need our Creality style LCD, the SVO6 Plus bracket with the included T-nuts and M4 bolts, the LCD mounting bracket with its included screws and bolts, and the 60 centimeter length LCD cable. The first thing we're gonna need to do is take this screen off of here. So go ahead and turn off your printer and unplug it. Push up on the bottom here, unplug the screen. Remove the stock bracket by taking these three screws out. Now we're gonna wanna remove the factory LCD cable. You can just pull on these little clips here and it comes off. So remove the clips all the way to the back by the control box. You'll have a couple of zip ties up front here holding the wires. Take the screw out of the control box. Unplug the stock LCD cable. Snip the zip tie that's right here. And remove the cable from the printer. Take the end of the new cable with the locking tab down and the cable pointed downward and plug it into the header. Route the cable the same direction as the factory one, and then we're gonna go ahead and close the control box back up. Put the control box screw back in. Put the cable underneath the printer. And we're gonna use one of the cable clips we took off to secure the new cable. The bracket mounts on the left side here, right behind the foot. Make sure to put the nuts into the extrusion before you put the bracket on. Now take the bracket with our logo facing the rear of the printer and put it on like this. And you're going to want to make sure the screw goes into the threaded part of the nut on the bottom here. Don't tighten it up all the way because we need to push this forward so it's right up against the bumper foot. Now you can go ahead and tighten this one down. We're going to go ahead and put the screw in here. If your nut isn't lined up, go ahead and just move it into position. Then put the screw in. When you tighten this down, put force on here so it pushes the back side of this up against the extrusion. And then tighten it down. Let's go ahead and assemble the LCD on the bracket. We are not going to use these cables. We just need the screen and the knob. Take your bracket and the screws, and we're gonna use the four coarse thread screws to put the screen into the bracket. And then these two screws will screw the bracket onto the one we just put on the printer. Go ahead and put the LCD in the bracket like so. Make sure the holes line up and then put the screws in each of the four corners. Go ahead and put the knob on the screen. And now we're gonna bolt this onto the printer bracket that we just installed. When you install the bracket, this little bump out here goes into the side here of the bracket. So put it in at a slight angle. And then it goes like this and put the two screws in here. We're going to plug the other end of the cable into the third header here, just like that. Go ahead and peel the protective film off the screen. The next thing we need to do is install the firmware on the control board. So we're going to switch over to the computer. I'm going to download the firmware, show you guys how to compile it, and then we'll be ready to use the printer with the new screen. So if we go to our help center and you scroll down, you can click on Solval Firmware and then solve all SV06 firmware. We're going to click download right here.
And then once this is done, we're going to extract it and then open it in Visual Studio Code. Now, if you guys don't already have Visual Studio Code set up, you can go to vscode.th3dstudio.com and there's a full guide on how to set that up. It's actually pretty easy, but we're not gonna go over setting up Visual Studio Code in this guide. So I'm gonna go ahead and extract this to a folder on my computer. I'm going to open Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna click Open Folder, go to the folder that I extracted the files to, double click the firmware folder, and then hit select folder. Click trust the authors of all files and click yes, I trust the authors. So go ahead and open Marlin, then configuration.h. And all we need to do is uncomment these two lines here. Do a control S to save. You can see the little dot goes away when I do that. And then we're gonna hit the little check mark in the lower left hand corner. This will now build the firmware. We're gonna put this firmware on the SD card and then put it into our printer. Now, I do want to note here, because I had this on my machine, is that if it does not take the firmware, you might have to rename the file for the first time you flash to sv06 plus mb.bin. So if you're having issues where it's not flashing it, try rename the file on the card. While that's going, I'm gonna take my SD card and put it into my computer so it's ready to copy the file. And we wanna make sure there's nothing on this SD card. I always like to double check that it's formatted with a FAT32 file system and an 8192 byte allocation size. So I'm going to do that. So our card is now formatted to the correct format and we have a success on our firmware. So if we go to PIO build and then the CPU name here, you'll see a UF2 dash numbers and then a bin file. If you have multiple bin files, it's because you compiled over and over again. If you're not sure which one is the one you just compiled, you can look here in the bottom where it says building and it will tell you what the file name is. So in this case, I want the UF2364714 and that number changes every time. It's based on the time you actually hit the compile button. So I can go ahead and drag this over to my SD card. I'm gonna take the card out of my computer and now we're gonna put this into the printer and turn it on. Once I do that, it will flash the firmware and then the upgrade is done. Go ahead and turn the printer on. And you'll notice it'll take a sec before the logo comes up. This is a good sign. This means it's flashing the firmware. Once it's done, you'll see the logo pop up on the screen, just like that. And then we have the firmware updated. So if you have a stock machine, meaning there's no modifications to your bed leveling system or anything else, you are done with the firmware settings. We can go ahead and do an auto home to make sure everything's working. So I'm going to press the menu button here, go to motion, and then hit Auto Home. One of the improvements I've made to the firmware is the Auto Z Align is a lot faster now. So if I go to Motion and then select Auto Z Align, it's gonna go a lot faster. You can see there, look how much faster that's going. So it's gonna go ahead and do the same thing the stock firmware does. It's just a little bit quicker. It'll go up and then it will ram the carriage up onto the stops here and then come back down into a Z-Home. So a couple of things I want to note here is you'll notice that these displays are really easy to read even when there's sunlight, unlike the stock screen. We also have options to change our sensorless homing as well, which we do not have on the stock screen. We also have a ton of options in advanced settings. Just like the stock one, we have our acceleration jerk, um, TMC drivers and all this other stuff. Also under the TMC drivers, we have sensorless homing configuration. So if you are having issues with the X or Y not homing, you can actually change that. In addition to that, you can also disable the filament sensor if you don't want to use it or if you're having problems with it. We have our standard EEPROM reset and store settings. One thing I do like to do is after I flash a firmware, I go ahead and hit reset but our new firmware does actually auto reset every time you flash now it's a change i just rolled out one other thing to note too is these lcds do work with clipper if you guys like playing with clipper you also have options to add input shaping to the board through the firmware now i didn't turn it on in this video but you will be able to do input shaping with this board and this screen and be able to set all the settings on here uh, the other thing we bake into all our firmware is the easy click click baby stepping. So if you need to adjust your Z height while the printer's printing, you can just press the button twice 
So I'll show you that again. One, two, and you'll get this menu. And then when you turn this, it actually will move the Z. Now, if you look at the coupler right here, you can see as I turn it, it's, it's pretty instant. One thing to mention when you do the first print is you're going to want to set your Z offset. So when you start your first print and you start looking at the filament go down, press this button twice and then turn this counterclockwise to lower the nozzle until you get good squish on there. Once you're done with that, back out of the menu, go to configuration and then store settings. You'll hear the confirmation beep and then that offset is set. Now, the offset can change from time to time depending on your machine or other factors, but you will always have the two-click live adjustment of your Z while it's printing. So if you're slightly too close or slightly too far, this is the feature you're going to use to do that adjustment. So now, one of the things I will mention because I had issues with the stock screen is that this will actually work perfectly when you're doing a G29. So I can actually have the printer do a G29 right from here and do level bed you'll also notice that this is a lot faster than the stock firmware. So this is gonna take measurements of your bed. So it's gonna do a home, so it's doing a home XYZ right now. And now it's going ahead and taking the probe readings. You can see here, I have it running a lot faster than the stock firmware, even with the stock sensor. If you guys are running our Easy ABL Pro, you can actually run even faster than this on the Z. Now you can try turning on the super fast probe option with the stock probe, but on this printer, it did not get very good accuracy. Your mileage may vary, so try it out, it's in there. If not, you can always go back to the standard speed. But you can see how much faster this runs. So overall, you're getting a better tuned machine. It's gonna run better, it's gonna work correctly with standard G-code, and you can see here, the LCD is not locked up after running a G29. It's still fully responsive, unlike the stock one. As you can see, the installation is really quick and straightforward. I hope you guys really enjoy having properly set up and working firmware on your SVO6 Plus. Me personally, this is a must have on any of the printers because we all know these stock machines firmware is not great. We no longer have to worry about doing firmware updates because with the 12864 screen, you're now running a screen that has been supported in Marlin for many, many years now and works great without its own firmware like these guys have. If you guys do want to pick up one of these LCD kits, there's a link to it in the video description that includes the cables, the screws, the screen, and all the brackets that were shown in this video to do a really quick installation as I shown here. Also, if you guys purchase the parts from us in the full kit, you get full technical support. So if you do have questions or you need help compiling the firmware, our technical support team will be able to give you a hand with that. Hope you guys that have the SVO6 Plus and get these kits enjoy your printer. And as always, Happy printing.